So again, we thank you for joining Breath of Worship Assembly tonight and joining us for our own time Bible study. We pray that this ministry, as my wife said, has been a blessing to you and it is um, um, contagious enough for you to invite uh, somebody else to everything that we're going to have going on to our Saturday restarts every third Saturday, our prayer call and our Bible studies. And so we just pray that this ministry has been a blessing to you that you will share that you will continue to, to share what Bethel is doing. So again, thank you for joining us tonight. And before I get into word into the, into the word, we actually we, let us pray. We actually want to pray. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, once again here we are, oh God, getting ready to feast, oh God, in Your Word and upon Your Word. And God, we thank You, God, for how Your Word has been changing us and challenging us and convicting us, Father. We thank You, God, that Your Word is positioning us. For everything, oh God, that you have for store in store for us. God, we thank you, God, upon your word, oh God, is truth, upon your word is holiness, strength, and righteousness, Father. So, Lord, we thank you for your word on tonight. Open our ears and our hearts, oh God, to be receptive of your word. Give us the ear to hear, Father, and the mind to comprehend, oh God, and to understand, oh God, what you're saying to us tonight. So we thank you for your word, for your word is life. Your word is true. Your word is revelation. Your word is light in a dark place, oh God. Oh God, your word is life, oh God. Oh God, even in the downtrodden state, Father. God, your word is the lifter of our heads, oh God. Your word is the heartbeat, oh God, of our hearts, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, so I pray, oh God, for your word to come forth, oh God, with clarity and power and a demonstration of your Holy Spirit. Lord, you know what your people need on tonight. So I thank you, God, for your word, oh God, meeting, oh God, all of us, oh God, at the point of our need. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And amen, amen, amen. Amen. So again, thank, thank you for joining us tonight. And I'm going to um, go over a, a few scriptures. I have quite a bit to try to read tonight, so I don't know if I'll get through all that God has given me on tonight. Um, but I do want to open up with John um, 8, 31 and 32, and then followed by Psalms 51. So we'll, just, we'll start there. We're going to look at John 8, verses 31 and 32, and then we'll flip over to Psalms 51. So John 8 and 31 says, when Jesus says, if you are my disciples, he said, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And let's read Psalms. I need my screen here to move. So let's read Psalms 51. Okay, here we go. Psalms 51, this is David. He says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inwards part. And that's where we're picking up our, our lesson for tonight there in verse six. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So tonight I wanna talk about the truth within that heals. The truth within that heals. I'm telling you, the Lord has done a work on, on me yesterday with this word, and I pray it does the same for you and those, my the YouTube viewers. Thank you for viewing about the Worship Assembly Bible Studies, and I pray this word blesses you as well. So we're talking about the, the truth that heals on within. So I want to read verse 5 from the, from the Amplified Version. In the Amplified Version, verse 5, it says, I was brought forth in a state of wickedness. In sin, my mother conceived me, and from my beginning, I too was sinful. Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being, and in the hidden part of my heart, 
you will make me to know wisdom. Hallelujah. Well, here David is saying in this Psalms 51, David is saying that it was in sin that I was conceived and, and shaped and formed in iniquity. And the Amplified Version says, from the, from the beginning, I was a sinner. In other words, David was saying that it was sin, the sin that the, the sin that I committed is from the residue of my beginning. And I did what was in my beginning, which was sin. And so we all when we, we all was born into this world, we was born into a world of sin. And so this world is shaped and had its, its form of sin and iniquity. And so David was saying, I was born in sin, conceived in sin, shaped and formed by sin. And so last week we talked about the process. We talked about embracing the challenge, the challenges of life. We talked about remaining on the pro, um, remaining in the process, and remaining on the um, the potter's wheel, and allowing God, and allowing God to do the molding and the shaping in our lives. And this is so vital because, as David said, uh, we we and uh, us also we were formed and shaped. Um, in, in sin until we came into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, until Jesus became our, our Lord and Savior of our lives, we were shaped and formed in iniquity and in sin. But it's but it's so important to allow God to do the molding and the shaping and reforming of us of uh, because of this this natural world of, of sin. And so that's why the scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things, the old man, the old system, the old things of this world are passed away. And behold, all things become new. So that's why it's so important to stay on the potter's wheel, to stay in the hand of God so he continue, so he can so he can continue to mold and shape us into his image and to his and into his likeness, because we was came into this world. In a sinful world, we came into this world as sin. So God has to remake us and shape us and form us and press out, you know, this this flesh and press out, you know, the, the sin, this sinful nature. So we have to stay on the potter's wheel and let God continue to mold, mold us and make us. But even during the process of God making us and shaping us and molding us, there are still going to be imperfections. There are still going to be falls. There's still going to be mistakes. There's still going to be bad decisions because we still have this life to live. We're still in this journey. Just as saved and sanctified as we are, we're still prone to flaws. We're still prone to make mistakes and bad decisions and, and to fall. And so there's still the, the process of continuing being molded and shaped by God. But even in but even during that process, we still have to deal with us. We still have to deal even with the things in this world. And David is saying here in this Hebrew song, he's expressing himself. David here is expressing himself in truth and the truth about himself. What is the truth about himself? That he has sinned and sinned before God. And the sin David is, is referring to is a sin with uh, Bathsheba. So that's why um, David says here, I mean, the verse, he says, the, the Lord desires truth in the innermost parts. And so David here is being honest with himself. D David here is coming to grips with himself that he has sinned, that he has fallen. He is making, he has made a mistake. And so he is admitting this to himself. David was admitting and revealing the truth to himself and about himself. And so before we all um, accepted Jesus Christ as a personal savior, like I stated earlier, we, we was um, we came into this world uh, in flesh, you know, part of this, this sinful nature, this sinful man. And then even after accepting Christ in our lives, there's still some things God is still working on us. And, you know, I, you know, as we end, end this journey, some things of God is still um, working in us and, and working and working um, out of us. Um, but we have to know that as God as God continued to work on us and through us and in us, that there's going to still be these um, these challenges. But the greatest challenge that we have is not the neighbor across the street, it's not the person on your job, it's not the family member, it's within. 
the greatest challenge is within you, is within me, within my mind, within your mind. So not because not only were we shaped and formed um, because of the sinful world and sinful nature, but also life. Life has formed us and life, life has life has shaped us. Even as we even after we came into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and even after we gave our life to Christ, we were still, we have still been shaped and formed by the things this by the things of this world, been uh, shaped by disappointment, hurt abandonment, neglect, the things that went well, things that did not go so well, the things that are going wrong, the things that went wrong, so many things in this life, relationships that are that have went well, relationships that did not go so well, so many things have shaped us and formed us and has influenced us in this world, in, in, our, in, in our life. And people right now, saved and unsaved alike, don't understand why they are the way they are, why they do the things they do, why they act the way they act, why they behave the way they behave, why they have the personality conflict that they have within themselves. And David says here in verse in verse six that God desires the truth to be in the innermost part, to be in the innermost being, because it is the truth. It is the truth about you. It is the truth about me. It is the truth within us that, that gives us the revelation of the areas and the places in our lives that needs to be healed. So you you don't you you when a person sees see you, when a person sees me, they really don't know the areas in our life that still need to be healed, that still need to be touched by God, that still need to be set free. So, but, but, but really deep down inside, if we really do the work, we would discover there's still some places, there's still maybe some areas in our life that needs to be healed. And I'm here to tell you, unrevealed and hidden truth causes dysfunction and disruption. Let me say that again. Unrevealed and hidden truth within causes dysfunction and disruption. I'm telling you, a person, a person that is not at peace with themselves and has not come into true revelation of themselves, um, they become a dis become a disruptive person because the unveiling of the truth brings healing. The unveiling, the unveiling truth brings deliverance and closure. I'm telling you, and a person that has not or refuses to accept the truth about themselves and remain in denial concerning the truth of themselves, and they let pride keep them from accepting and embracing the truth, have a disruptive spirit. Oh, God, that, that gives me an answer. That gives me an answer about some folks and about some people that I, that I have wasted time trying to figure out. Because a person that is not at peace with themselves has and, it, and has and is disruptive, has a disruptive spirit. And sometimes we use so much of our valuable time trying to figure out people, trying to figure out why they are the way they are, why they do the things they do, why they act the way they act, why they treat you the way they treat you, why they don't like you, why they, you know, why people treat you differently. It's because they have not discovered the truth about themselves. Oh my goodness. And because the same people we're trying to figure out and the same people we spend so much time on trying to make adjustments with and maybe I need to change or maybe I need to do this. Maybe I didn't smile right. Maybe I didn't do this right. And we're trying to figure, trying to figure people out and trying to figure ourselves out because of people. And, and so and so we're trying to figure people out. But I'm here to tell you, they haven't figured them own, their own selves out. They haven't discovered the, uh, the truths within themselves to figure out who they are and why they are the way they are. And so we're trying to figure people out. They haven't figured their own selves out. They have yet not come to a conclusion of who they are. And here we are trying to uh, figure people out that are disturbed. 
disturbed because they have not discovered the truths about themselves. Hallelujah. Oh, this is, oh, glory to God. This is good. Uh, but the same goes for you and I as well, that if we do not consistently and persistently try to discover the truths within ourselves and about ourselves, we too could become, you know, disturbed and disruptive people. Because I'm I, I know this for sure. A person that has a disruptive spirit does not have peace. And a person that does not have peace is because they, they have not come to understand the truths about themselves. What, what is it that causes a person to be disruptive? Why, why is a person not peaceful? Because it's a truth behind that. It's a truth, a reason why a person has a disruptive and a dysfunction spirit. It's a truth behind why a person is not a peaceful person. But until that is discovered, until a person has the courage to discover that, they will remain that way. They will keep a character of having a disruptive spirit because it is truth. Oh, Lord, this is so good. It is truth that is the door to healing, deliverance, and restoration. It is truth that is the door to healing and deliverance and restoration. Because without the amenities of truth, there is no resolution and there can be no answer discover. So it's just like me asking uh, or telling you a problem or it's me. It's like me asking um, some telling someone about this problem that I have, but I don't give them all the details to my problem. I give I give them half of the details to my problem. So if I tell a person half of my problem. Well, they can only give me half of a solution. They can only give me half of an answer. But if I go into detail and tell them all the truth and tell them all the problem, I'm more prone to receive a better answer or more of a detailed answer. So if I just release some information, I'm going to only receive, receive some information to my problem. And and so so we'll so I will receive half the answer or half or half the solution. But the more detail I render and give, the more truthful I am about what I'm going, about what I'm going through, what I'm facing, whatever the problem is, the, the more of a detailed answer solution I will receive. Because because that's the way confession works, because it that's why there's a confession of sin. There must be a confession of sin. Why? Because the confession of sin is the truth that there is a lifestyle of sinful, unrighteous living. And because there's an, amend, uh, an admittance and an exposure of sin, the answer can be discovered. So when I admit that, that I'm a wretch undone, I, I'm, in, I'm in sin, you know, that I, I, uh, I'm a sinner, when, when that is confessed, that is that is saying that I want to answer to this. I just have admitted my truth or, or my issue, which is sin. So now, a, so now a true answer can be discovered. What is the true answer to sin? Jesus. What is the true answer? What is the true answer to, to sin? Jesus. Jesus forgives sin and he washes sins away. But, but if there's no confession of if there's no confession of sin, there can be no receiving of salvation. Boy, I'm going to try hard tonight. Help me, Lord. And so and so that's why confession and truth about ourselves, I'm talking about the truth about me. I don't know what the what the real truths of you are. So we so this is going to be a challenging word for you to discover some truths about yourself, because David says God desires truth in the innermost parts. And so not, not only truth about God and who he is and God's word, but also the truth and the revelation within, the truth about what's really going on on the inside of you, the truth about how you really feel deep down on the inside, what's really within you, what's the truth, uh, what's the truth of you really within on, on the inside, deep down on the inside, because some truth about you, some truth about me, some truth about people can be so hidden and so swept under the rug and so buried that that's the part that is so hidden and it is so deep that it's almost undiscoverable. 
And guess what? The enemy wants to keep it undiscoverable because he knows if that truth is revealed, that deliverance is going to come. He wants to keep us bound and not discovering the truth about ourselves because, you know, once the truth is revealed, now we now our answer has to come. Once the truth is revealed, Jesus now has to show up because the truth has been revealed. And so uh, people um, are, are walking around and I may have been in this condition myself, walking around and, and functioning as normal, everyday life, just going through life, uh, uh, trying to be normal, functioning as we're as as we're normal, but really cannot because there is undisclosed and un uh, and unidentified truths about us and about our and about ourselves and about themselves. Because let me tell you, behind a need, behind every need, there is a truth. I'm telling you, this is such wonderful revelation on tonight. I'm a, I got to slow down, take my time with this. I really want you to get this tonight. Behind a knee, behind every knee, there is a truth. There is a truth. Because sometimes we jump to the need first, but we have to discover what is the truth. So, so David is after forgiveness and he's repenting, but from what? And David was open with the truth. I have sinned. He said, so I have to be truth with within the innermost part of me because behind behind needing healing there is a truth behind needing deliverance there is a truth behind needing to to be set free from something there is a truth and I'm here to tell you tonight I want you to be at ease and to be at and to be in comfort and to be consoled that it is okay to tell yourself the truth about yourself Mm, 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 mm. My goodness, let me pause right there. Oh, I got to take a breather on that one. It is okay to tell yourself the truth about yourself because when that happens, you create a desire and begin to search for an answer and solution to be restored, to be renewed, to be healed, uh, to 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 get the uh, to get the answer. Um, to emerge, you know, to, you have that desire for resolution to come. And so when, when you begin to discover the truths, you know, about yourself, then you be, then, then there has to be a search or and, and a search for the, for the answer, for the solution, for restoration, for forgiveness, to be delivered, to be set free, to be healed. And so, so that, that truth causes a, a answer uh, a desire for an answer to emerge. That truth causes the desire for an answer um, to come into uh, fruition. The truth and identifying those deep issues within yourself is to heal us, is to heal me, is to heal you. It's not to cause reproach and an embarrassment to you. It's to bring you freedom and not condemnation. It's to heal you and not hurt you. It's to deliver you and not to devastate you. But but I'm talking about the truths to reveal to yourself as you re, as you have this conversation with God. It's not to go tell your neighbor what you've done and how you feel. This is a conversation between you and God, <laughs> between you yourself and I. You, you know, between you and God and yourself. You know, so so these are these are is a truth and truths that has to be revealed. And so freedom and deliverance can come. The, the truth uh, about whatever the truth within you may be is to, is, to, is to cause deliverance and healing to come in your life. It's not to devastate you. It's not to bring condemnation, but it's to bring healing. It's to bring restoration. It's to cause you to be restored and to be renewed because the more truth is revealed, the more healing that, that will come. The more truth is revealed, the more healed and whole you will become. The more truth is revealed, the more healed and whole you will become. Because even when we look at the gospel, especially the synoptic gospels, the synoptic gospels, gospels are Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because their writing is, is so um, similar with, with timelines and events of Jesus. 
And so even, especially in the synoptic gospel, even in the synoptic gospels, the, the truth of the need uh, was revealed. It's amazing how in the gospels, when Jesus went to go heal somebody, deliver somebody, there was a, there was a, God, the scripture always revealed the backdrop. The backstory. It wasn't just a person was sick and need to be healed, but but the scripture revealed the the truth behind the need. For example, let's look. Turn with you if you can, if you're a good place, if you have your Bibles, or you can just write the scripture down for reference. I'm going to look at Luke eight and start at the forty third verse. So if you have your Bible, you can flip there with me tonight. We and we're going to discover we're going to discover discover some truths um, behind the need. We, we're going to see the need, but we're going to discover the truth behind the need. Oh, Luke 8, Luke 8 to 43, starting the 43rd verse. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which spent all her living upon physicians, which neither could he, any of them heal her, she came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude pressed upon thee. And you, how do you say it? Who touched me? And oh yeah, I'm stopping there. So, and, and so yeah, I'm in there at that verse. And so Jesus said, so the disciple says, how can you say who touched me? So, so we know um, what the need is. The need is she needs to be healed. She needs she needs to be healed. The, the need is um, uh, she's hemorrhaging, and she, and um, she you know she's she's looking you know for healing, and so she went to to touch Jesus to be healed. But let's look at the let's look at the um, the truth for this need. So the truth is she's hemorrhaging. She has, she does has this this blood condition. She's hemorrhaging, and the and the the truth is she's been in this condition. The Bible scripture says for twelve years, and now she's broke, and now she's poor. Why? Because the Bible says she spent all her living on doctors. So she spent all her living on doctors, and none of the doctors could help her. So she's hemorrhaging. She's been like this for twelve years. And now she's broke, she's destitute and spent all her money and she did go to doctors. And then the truth even goes a little bit further, a little bit deeper. The truth of her condition goes a bit deeper because according to the little, because according to the Levitical law in Leviticus 15 and 25 through 27, a person with the issue of blood had to remain quarantined. And also, whoever came in contact with the person with the issue of blood, they was considered to be unclean as well. And they had to wash and bathe and wash their clothes. And they had to be considered unclean as well until the evening. And so the truth of, of this need is she's isolated. She had to be um, help from people. She couldn't be around people, anywhere near people. See, the scripture could have said that there was a woman who was ill and who had a condition. But the scripture let us know the truth of this need. And see, when the truth of the matter is, is so deep and so painful, it will create desperation. Her truth was so deep that it created a desperation for her to, to break uh, a religious law. She broke the religious law of being in the crowd, of being among people. She was not supposed to be in public. She was not supposed to be in the crowd. But because her um, her truth uh, was, was, was so great, it made her desperate. It made her so, so desperate that she, that she broke a religious law of being in the vicinity of people but but she didn't care about her isolation it was it was true she was isolated it's true that she was prohibited from being among others it's true that she was destitute and this truth was so great that it turned her desperation into the pursuit of jesus so it wasn't the fact that she just needed to be healed that's the need yes she needed to be healed but what's the truth behind the need so the scripture helps us discover the truth 
and she this she has a lot going on. She needed she needed to be healed because if she was because if she had a family and if she had a husband, she was set aside and put out in quarantine for her from her own family. She couldn't be around her own kids. She couldn't be around her husband. She couldn't be a wife. Oh, good God Almighty! And so this truth of her condition runs deeper than just she needs just to be healed. Her healing was not only physical, but her healing would also be for her family, for her her emotions. How would you? How would anybody feel just like the pandemic? Some people right now are still going through therapy because of the pandemic. Uh, children going through therapy now still because of the pandemic. Why? Isolation. Couldn't go outside and, and play. You know, everybody just in each other's face every day, you know, and just doing the same thing every day and, and wearing masks and, and afraid to go anywhere. And, and so here it is. She's going through the same thing of, of isolation. But her desperation because of her truth was so great that it caused her to pursue Jesus. And so when truth is so great and so deep, it, it, and no matter how deep, no matter how great the truth is, it will it will cause the answer always to be the to be Jesus. But but that's why the truth within ourselves need to be need to be revealed so we can discover this is something for Jesus. Because sometimes we carry around so much within us, and then we don't allow the truths within ourselves to be revealed because because. They remain hidden, and we don't uh, kind of afraid to admit those truths, and so they they stay embedded within us. But God wants us free. God wants His people free and set free from anything that causes bondage, anything that that causes us to not to be free, anything that causes us uh, to walk around having us pretending like we function in wholeness. A lot of people run, walking around pretending and like they're functioning in wholeness, but just in, but just still walk around incomplete, still broken and disturbed and disruptive, and don't have no clue why. Don't have why because there's some undiscovered truths. Hallelujah! But when those truths are discovered, that is the pathway to Jesus. It causes us to have a desperation. The Lord, I can I just discover why I do the things I do. Oh, why I've been feeling the way I feel. And so now that opens up the door for Jesus, for you and I to be in the pursuit of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to look at an, another, another truth behind the need. Well, let's look at the Samaritan woman. Let's look at the Samaritan woman in John 4, starting with verse 7. Oh, Lord, I don't know. I hope I get through this, this time. I'm watching my time here. John 4, starting at verse 7. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, give me to drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. She, she said, you, you are a Jew. How can you ask me for drink, a Samaritan woman? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered unto her and said, if you only knew the gift of God, Oh, Lord, if you only knew the gift of God and who is asking you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. She said, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then will you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well and drank from it himself as did his sons and his livestock? Jesus said unto her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. <laughs> Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I will not get thirsty and have to come here to, the, to, here to draw water. Jesus told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she said. Jesus said unto her, you are correct to say that you have no husband. In fact, you have had five husbands, and the man you have now is not your husband. You have spoken, here it is, you have spoken truthfully. You have spoken truthfully. So what's this, what's this truth behind, uh, behind this need? One, she's a Samaritan. 
She's a Samaritan woman, so she's outcast. She's ostracized because Samaritans was known as half-breeds to the Jews, and the Jews despised the Samaritans. So she comes to the so she will come to the well at a time where nobody else would be around. So now she she's always been moving in secrecy. And she uh, she didn't go to the well anytime she felt like it. And so now she now she deals with self-confinement. It's one it's one thing, it's one thing, it's one thing for people to try to confine you, but it's another thing where you just confine within yourself. <laughs> so she's dealing with self-confinement. She's an outcast, she is despised, treated differently, ostracized, not liked, not befriended. And now Jesus deals with another truth. So, so one truth is, is she's a Samaritan. The other truth is she's been trying to replace self-security with men. She's been substituting being promiscuous for self-worth. She's been trying to find her identity and self-worth by through the by through through the way of men. And all of this has caused her to have an identity crisis. Her identity crisis is so great. She tells Jesus, who can give her a living water that she'll never thirst again. She tells Jesus, we should not even be having this conversation. She is so blind to what she really needs because she don't really know, have the revelation of who Jesus is. She tells Jesus that we should not even be having this conversation. So, so what is the need? The need is she needs the revelation of who Jesus is. And she needed to know that he is the one that can fill her void and fill her thirst. And she could be given the, uh, the identity, the affirmation that she has always needed and that she has always longed for, that she has always longed for. When the truth was revealed, the need could be met. Jesus got to the truth. It's not only that Jesus could give her the water that she spiritually needed, but she had to see the truth that you've been trying to fulfill yourself and give yourself identity, self-esteem, self-security. You've been trying to figure, you've been trying to walk around and figure out how to how to uh, function normally by being with everybody else's husband. Boyfriend after boyfriend has been her way to find security. And so when she said, when Jesus asked her to go get her husband, she spilt the truth. She spilt the truth. She said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, oh, we can get somewhere now. Oh, we've been honest. You're telling me the truth. So now that you've been truthful, I can meet your need. She said, I have no husband. Jesus said, you have spoken truthfully. Matter of fact, you have five and the one you with now is not even yours. But the truth was revealed. And because the truth was revealed, her need could be met. What was her need? Jesus to give her something, to give her an answer, to be her solution, to where she would never have to run to another man again. She would have, have to take somebody else's husband. That Jesus could give her, fill her, her thirst with something that she will never have to thirst again to, to fill her void the way she was filling it. For herself all all that time she was trying to fill her void herself her own way but how many know that when jesus comes in when jesus really comes in when jesus really comes in to, to heal when jesus comes in to deliver when jesus delivers when he feels that void and when he feels that thirst and we comes in to heal and deliver and set free that's a total healing that's total restoration that is a total total renewal and so we see we see the truth being discovered behind the need. I think I have time to do maybe to go over one more. I may have to finish this lesson next, um, next week. Let's go to one more here. John five and five. We're gonna look at John five and start with the fifth verse. Looking at the need behind the uh, looking at the truth behind the need. John five and five. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and he knew that he had already been in that condition for a long time, Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? 
The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, when the water is stirred up, excuse me, when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. And I've heard this passage of scripture in so many different views and so many different ways, but most of the time I've heard this scripture, it's been from the perspective that the man gave Jesus an excuse. The, the Jesus then asked him, um, why are you not healed? Or, or, or Jesus asked him, why do you, um, do you want to be made whole? And so if I heard it, that this scripture has been um, said in so many different ways that this man replied with an excuse. The excuse um, was that I have no one to put me, put me in. Every time I try to get in this pool, somebody steps in before me. But let's look at the truth behind you. The, so, so what's the need? The man needs to be healed. But let's discover some truth behind this, uh, behind this need. Because really the man is just wanted to tell Jesus his truth. The truth behind, you know, what he needs and, and why he's in this condition and why he's there and how he got there. He just wanted to him. He just wanted the man just wanted to express himself. He wanted to express himself about how he felt about his situation and explain how he got there and why he was still in this condition that he was in. Because let me tell you something. If you can't if you can't tell God how you really feel, who can you tell? If you can't tell God what is really going on with the inside of you, who can you tell? Jesus wants us to express the truth to him. And so I, I, I have I have a problem with people saying that the man gave Jesus an excuse. No, this man was frustrated. He said, every time I come to, to the place where I can step in a pool, somebody gets in before me. Somebody steps in before me. I have nobody to, to put me in this pool. As a matter of fact, the person who brought me to this pool has left me. The person who was supposed to help me into the pool is gone. They brought me here and left me. So the man at the pool was expressing the, the, the truth about his whole situation. The man would say, I have no one to help me. I'm here around people that's just looking out for themselves. This man has watched people for 38 years. I don't, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Tell Jesus how you feel, sir. He has been watching people for 38 years get in the pool and get healed. For 38 years, he's been watching people get in the pool before him. 38 For 38 years, he's been frustrated. For 38 years, he has been scooting and sliding on his elbows trying to make his way to the pool for 38 years. 38 years. I would, this man told Jesus how he felt, wasn't an excuse. He was telling the truth behind his knee. He wanted to let Jesus know I've been at this for 38 years. And the person who brought me to this pool left me here. I have nobody to help me. I'm a little frustrated. Every time I get ready to get in the pool, somebody jumps in, somebody jumps in before me. And it, because listen, even Jesus expressed how he felt in the Garden of Gethsemane. When it was time to go to the cross, Jesus expressed how he felt about the cross. Jesus said to the Father, Lord, let this cup pass from me. So if it was okay for even Jesus to express himself to the Father, it has to be okay for us to express ourselves to God. I'm here to tell you that it is okay to admit the truth to yourself about yourself or what about what is really going on. What is really going on? How do you really feel? How did you really get to the place of stress? How do you really get to the place of distress? Why do you really feel the way that you feel? Who did it? Who said it? Who caused the affliction? Who caused the pain? What is the truth about the, the about the disappointment? Where did the disappointment come from? Who disappointed you? What's their name? When did it happen? Uh, how does it make you feel? What is the truth about the regret? What is it that you regret? Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. How, why do you regret it? Who, who, who makes you regret what you regret? What is the truth behind the mistake? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Why are you angry? What is, the, what is the truth behind the anger? What is the truth behind the issues? What is the truth behind the discomfort? What is the truth behind the hurt and behind the pain? Because sometimes we, Lord, just, we just say, Lord, take it away. Well, what is it? Lord, take it away. What is it? 
What is the truth behind the it? Lord, just take uh, take it away. Uh, Lord, I don't want to feel this way. Well, what is the way that you feel? What is the way? Because sometimes we, we say things in such a way that we that we don't discover the truth. We we have it maxed. We have we have something really over. We really don't want to say what it really is. And this is the conversation that you and I need to be having with God and nobody else. So so the truth and the depths of what's really going on within can be can be discovered. The, 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 the truth about, you know, the, the, the place that you're at in life and how you feel about where you are in life right now. Uh, what is the truth behind the word? Why are you worried? What is the worry? Where is the worry stemming from? What is causing you to worry? Come on, let's identify it. Well, what is causing you to not sleep well at night? What is the stress? What, what is the cause of the uneasiness? Because it, because it takes a courage to discover and accept the truth because because um the in the truth and the truth is the beginning of restoration and healing in the truth i'm not talking about nobody else's truth i'm talking about your own truth with within you and I, let me tell you something when i was studying this word upon this week i'm telling you i begin to spill the beans to the lord oh yes i did I began to, man, so much truth start coming up out of me, how I felt, the, the, the concerns that I had and, and answers I need questions to. I'm telling you, some of us has not had a good heart to heart with God in a long time. Um, we have not had a good sit down with the Lord just to express ourselves to him because he is our father. He is our brother. He was our friend. All right. Amen. So we thank you for holding on. We have a, uh, a bad thunderstorm here. So we, our power just um, went out just for a hot second. And so we lost internet co internet connection as well. But anyway, God is still worthy to be praised. And I'm um, just going to finish this Bible study up, uh, Bible study lesson up on tonight. And so I was I was talking about having that um, heart to heart discussion with the Lord. And I was saying that some of us need to have a really good sit down with God. And I was saying as yesterday, I did that. I just began just to just unpour before God, just, just telling God how I really felt. And I'm telling you, the Lord set me free. The more, the more I spilled, the more I told God how I felt and the concerns I had, the more he started dealing with my heart, the, the more deliverance and the healing I began to receive because I didn't know I had so much suppressed. I didn't know I had that so much suppressed on the inside of me. I, t I was just naming things and naming situations, just calls and just calling out concerns. Oh man, I tell you, the Lord just did just did an awesome, an awesome work within me. And so I want God to do the same thing within you that discover those truths. And you will be amazed how some how far back some of these truths may go. And even the man that was at the pool of Bethesda, he said uh, for 38 years. He told Jesus, you know, the condition that he was in, but his condition was, was um, had the surrounding circumstances from 38 years, 38 years. And even when David came to um, within, within himself to admit his wrong and his sin before God, he just poured out. He just poured out the truth. He says, he said, a matter of fact, that God desires. This is the most important part. God desires the truth to be within us. Not only the truth of him and his word, but even the truth to ourselves of what is really going on. But it takes a courage to discover that truth and embrace that truth and accept that truth of whatever it may be. No matter how deep it may go, no matter how hidden it may be, even let me say this, no matter even how painful it may be. But I'm telling you, when the truth is discovered. When the truth is revealed, when you sit down and have that heart to heart with God, I'm telling you, it brings healing. It brings a ref it brings a refreshing. It bring oh man, it just does something to your spirit. Because I'm telling you, I'm a witness. It happened to me this week. I didn't know I had so much to tell God. I didn't know how much I had to express to God. I did not know, but I, I said some one thing and something else came. I said something else and something else came and tears just become again to roll down my eyes because I'm telling God how I feel. Woo! I begin to tell God some truths within me. 
And the more truth I begin to discover, the more he began to set me free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I don't have time to really finish this lesson on the night. It's another part I want to go to, but I'm telling you, I'm going to try to finish this up on next week. But we're going to we going to discover that there is healing in the in truth. There's healing. There's healing when we have that truth within ourselves. Jesus, the Lord spoke to me of several months ago and just out of the blue, he spoke to me, said, I am the healer of all things. I am the healer, and I don't know what he will meant by that, because when we think about healing, we always think about physical. But he said about well, all things. So when we start digging deep and discovering those truths about ourselves, I'm telling you, God began to just take away the heaviness and just begin, because that's what the scripture says. He said he will give us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. So, so it's, it takes courage. It takes some work. It takes some thoughts. But sit on your father's lap. Oh, glory to God. Sit, sit with Jesus. Oh, and, and tell him all about it. Oh, yeah. He wants to hear how you feel. He wants to express your truth. He wants to, you to express what did, what's not going right, how you feel about it. Because at the end of the day, what you're telling God is, this is the issue. This is the truth of the problem. But I know you are the answer. I have to be honest with myself to tell you, God, this is the truth so you can reveal an answer. Because when we because when we don't release the truth, when we don't discover the truth within, it's almost like telling Jesus, we got this. Or the, the truth that's really within me, I don't need healing to. I don't need restoration from. I don't need deliverance from. I'm just going to keep it buried. I'm going to keep it hidden. I'm going to keep it undiscovered. I'm going to keep it right where it is because I, I, I got this or it's the pride not to really deal with this, to, to deal with it. And so we go along and, as, and functioning day by day with buried issues. People walking around with just buried stuff, just buried stuff. And Jesus, was, and Jesus was saying tonight, if you just talk to me, if you just tell me what's going on the inside of you, what's really going on, how you really feel about it, how you really feel about this situation, how you really feel about this circumstance, let's get to the truth. And nobody listening, but just me and you. David wasn't talking to everybody else. David was just talking to himself and God. Hallelujah. So take courage. And have you a good one-on-one -on -one with the Lord and discover some truths about yourself and do that search and do that search within. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So I will try to finish this up on next week. Thank you for hanging, hanging there with us. It's been a bad thunderstorm all day. So thank you for hanging with. Us. I pray this word bless you on tonight. It sure blessed me on this week. And it's blessing me even right now talking about truth. Truth within, not the truth about your neighbor, not the truth about anybody else across the street, but the truth about yourself, what's really going on. Oh, hallelujah. God, he want to hear all of it. Oh, don't hold it. Don't hold nothing back. Tell him all of it. Grab you some tissue, some napkins and paper towels, whatever you got to do. Hallelujah. And tell God all about it. Oh, praise the Lord. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, as we come before you tonight, we thank you, oh God, for this word, oh God, to sin, to uh, to sin, oh God, conviction, and to be a challenge, oh God, to our spirit to discover, God, those truths about ourselves, Father. Go, God, we thank you, God, oh God, that we can't be honest with nobody else. We have to be honest with ourselves before you, God. There are truths, God, that we need to discover. Hallelujah. Some some re, um, regrets that we haven't discussed and some painful events, oh God, that still lays embedded on the inside of us, oh God, we want to release. We want to be free. We want to oh, express ourselves, even as the man at the pool of Bethesda did. Oh God, it wasn't an excuse. He told Jesus how he felt, that he's been like this for 38 years, and there's no one, no one to help him. Oh, people jumping in the pool before him. God, so he just expressed his conditions. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, help us, oh God, oh God, to relinquish all pride, oh God, 
oh God, to have, oh God, the heart of veracity before you, God, where we come before you in all truth, God, where we discover, God, the places we need to be healed, discover the places we need to be, be set free, discover those places where we need to be delivered, Father, in the name of Jesus, your, your ear, God, is close to our hearts. You are ready, God, to listen. Oh, God, you have given us your ear on tonight. God, in the name of Jesus, oh, God. So, God, we thank you for setting us free. Thank you for delivering us, oh, God. Thank you, God, that we take the time with you to have a sit down with you, a one-on-one -on -one with you, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, God. And no matter how deep we got to go, oh, God, and no, no matter, God, how painful it may be, no matter how deep we may have to dig, God, we want to be free from it. We want to be free from, oh God, from every, oh God, oh God, truth that we discover, oh God, within ourselves and about ourselves, Father, in the name of Jesus. So we thank you, God, for deliverance, oh God, taking place from your word on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And amen, amen, and amen. Well,